Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I noticed my guy Ben and Jerry here actually shed out. And when I say guy, I should actually say guys because of course there's two of them and it looks like they shed absolutely beautifully and they look so good right after a shed. And a lot of people ask about that wound that happened like six, eight months ago. Every time they shed, they'll get a little bit raw in between, but uh, it's healing and healing and healing and getting better each and every time. So they are absolutely doing well. I'm so blessed to be able to have a two-headed snake you guys know that I was on a quest for it for so long and uh, it's cool that now we've had Ben and Jerry for almost two years it's crazy to think about it he's about four years old and people ask me all the time like how long do two-headed snakes live the truth is is that once they make it to adulthood like Ben and Jerry they typically live a full life a California king snake is gonna live anywhere from like 15 to 25 years so I sure hope that we'll have Ben and Jerry for at least another 10 or 15 years that's for sure and you know this time of year is so exciting because every morning I can't wait to get to work because I get to breed snakes, right? And this is the time that things are hooked up in the morning. So what do you say we head over to BHB and just go ahead and see what's breeding today? As of today, we are actually one week into the breeding season for the pythons. It's pretty exciting. It's been a really good week with tons of lockups. Now, just so you guys know, typically we do four to five day cycles where four or five days we breed, then we give them three days off. But the first cycle, I'll typically go about 10 days just because I want every female in the group to have a male in at least once. Even even if they don't breed, having a male in can sometimes spur on follicular growth and kind of get that cycle starting. Now, interestingly enough, when you first start breeding, typically within a couple weeks, the males will go into shed. It's almost like they're resetting their cycle to say, all right, it's the breeding season, let's shed. And so a lot of the males are starting to go in shed and males won't really breed or very rarely will breed when they're in shed. So we're kind of getting to the end of that cycle, we'll probably breed for another three or four days, give them a break, feed everything, and then that's when it really starts. That next cycle that's only five days long is when things really start going on. We'll probably do one or two of those cycles and then we'll ultrasound. So let's go ahead, just get male switched out, see if there is any breeding. I'm imagining it's gonna start to slow down because it's been a week and well as males are starting to go into shed. But let's see if anything's hooked up. And, uh, and again, I'm gonna take you guys along on the entire journey of the breeding season. And for anyone that wants to breed snakes, I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of helpful tips. These are the very first breedings of the day here. It's actually a pastel pied bred to an Enchi Hetfer pied. So we get some pastel Enchi pieds and stuff like that. Again, I am so happy the amount of breedings that we've had here in the first seven days. Typically that first week is not nearly as successful. So hopefully that means it's gonna be a really successful breeding season. I'm not really sure. We won't know until we start ultrasounding, but the females all look good. Males are breeding really well. So uh, hey, it's a great start to the year. This is an exciting pairing here. This is actually a pinstripe, red stripe, super stripe. And it's being bred to a bumblebee super stripe. So a lot of potential cool combinations in here. And again, this is the first breeding of this pinstripe, red stripe, super stripe of the year. So, uh, and this is definitely the female I'm happy he's hooked up with. And that's it, just a handful of locks. But to be honest with you, I keep telling you guys, keep an eye on the weather patterns. Right now we have a high pressure front, clear skies. Uh, probably not gonna get a lot of breeding on those days. A handful of good locks for sure, but tomorrow, no, we actually have a big storm coming through. So I'm not expecting a lot of breedings tomorrow morning, but I'm expecting the following morning to be a really good breeding site. So I'm telling you, it's a trick you gotta keep an eye on. If you get a low pressure front coming through a storm, rainstorm, snowstorm, whatever it is, that's when you're gonna see really increased amount of breeding. So whenever those storms come through, make sure your proper males are in with your proper females. Trust me when I tell you this, it's a secret that's gonna help you a tremendous amount. Looking like Nova is interested in some food today. What do you think uh, we go ahead and feed him? What are you doing, bud? Whoa! Come on, get back in your cage. Oh, Nova is on fire today. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He's so fun to feed. You 
Now I know not everyone wants an ugly sweater when it comes to the holidays, so we definitely have Drogo merch, the Ho Ho Drogo merch, and just normal shirts like this. You know, a couple different colors. You can get a hoodie, also a coffee mug and stuff like that. It's gonna be available for a limited time only. You can get it now and it'll ship before Christmas, so it's a great Christmas gift. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Remember, Ho Ho Drogo, get in the holiday spirit. Just going through and checking out some of the ball pythons from this year, and holy moly, we have a bunch of cool animals. I mean, I could probably spend four hours just showing you these guys but this is actually a banana cine lori that we had shot we actually had shot two of these and it's just interesting how it changes the color it's like no other banana i've ever seen absolutely love this guy and again that lori project has a ton of potential so the special ball pythons when bred to mojave is what produces the crystal ball pythons but if you breed two specials together you get what's called a super special and it's just a very interesting snake that has like kind of orange patterning on it and again the thing that's nice about this is if you were to say breed a super special Special because it's of course the super gene and breed it to say a super Mojave that's a super gene you get a hundred percent crystals so this is definitely a little powerhouse animal here we definitely produce a bunch of really cool clown ball pythons this year this is one of my favorites though this is actually just a lesser leopard clown ball python but just look at that cool striping down its entire body that leopard really reduces the pattern and then of course the lesser makes the color change a little bit this thing is absolutely stunning I've said it a million times that pides are still the most stunning animal in my opinion uh, there's just something about them and of course we had some albino pies this year for the first time here we had produced plenty of pies in the past but we would never produced albino pies so this year we produced our first albino pies which I was pretty excited about now hopefully we can produce some dreamsicle pies here pretty soon which is the lavender albino pies because then you get even a more contrasting animal with a little bit of purple in it unbelievably incredible one of our BHB mascots up here in the office of course is one of our little baby frillies from this year uh, they are so cute and I wanted to show you how big they've gotten i mean look at how absolutely incredible of course we only hatched a couple this year so unfortunately we didn't have a great year with production but uh if you mess with them at this size they really become super docile just like nova and that's what we're starting to do here uh, definitely a cool little shop mask and we always have a couple animals over here at bhb just to kind of keep the office spirits up hey after all we are reptile people right so it's pretty cool and beth does a really good job of spoiling this little monkey you guys came up with a ton of great ideas for the black throat monitor so i think that the one i liked the best was and there was a bunch i like brittle i like uh, there was all kinds of ones but i think i'm going to go with flapjack with this guy here the black throat monitor and then if we get the bigger one maybe we'll go with waffle so there'll be flapjack and waffle i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm going to go ahead and feed him but i'm going to see if i can put him on the ground because we want to start training him so that he can come out again he's small now but we want him to come out and eat just like elvis and stuff like that so this will be the first time that we're going to take him down on the ground and see if we can get him to eat some roaches So as you can see, he's not very happy right now. I don't think that, there he goes. There he goes, he finally took, what a little monkey. I mean, he literally bit me. He's running around like crazy. And this is just all part of the training, right? I mean, he's a little baby. He doesn't know much better. So I'm gonna just keep him kind of occupied with little roaches. Come on, look at bud. Here you go, here you go. There he goes. Whew. I tell you what, it's not easy at all to get him going, but I'm gonna just keep on trying. There he goes. So uh, this is so this is all just part of the training technique, right? We gotta get him used to being fed this way. Come on, buddy. There you go. There you go. Definitely getting the hang of it. I love it. It did start, didn't start out really good, but this is how we actually go about doing things. So uh, uh, he's well on his way. And just like that albino pied, albinos are amazing animals, but when you add certain genes to them, oh my goodness, they get incredible. This is just an albino black pastel right here. And it just increases the contrast, increases the white look to it. Absolutely stunning. Albino cinnies are really pretty similar too, but I think that the busyness of the black pastel, which is a little busier than the cinnamon pastel, makes these guys is absolutely ridiculous <laughs> dog i tell you what take a look at this ripper right here this is actually a banana black pastel and the amount of purple in that animal is ridiculous Ridiculous. The thing I like about this is that black splotching on it. Actually, it's a paradox splotching. And that's something that's not genetic. It's just a random thing where you have like a bleed through a pattern from another gene. And basically that's like the black from a normal animal right there. And that's just why they call it paradoxing. But wow, that thing is a ripper. I just love this color palette here. If you remember when we cut this clutch, which I'll tell you in a second what it is, uh, it was actually a purple snake. But this is actually a super pastel, lesser cine. And so it's absolutely incredible when they hatch they're kind of purple as they get older it turns more like yellow and gray but nevertheless still the color palette of it is absolutely stunning next up is my boy karma 
There he goes. He's definitely a weird one. It doesn't seem like he has like a super sticky tongue. Like he used to be able to crush him from like 18 inches away and then suck him back in his mouth. Now I have to kind of put it right into his mouth. He's kind of weird, but hey, he's worth it because he's absolutely adorable. You guys remember when almost every day on the vlog I would feed my dart frogs? Well, it's been a long time since we fed the dart frogs, so let's just go ahead and crush these out. Uh, again, I do it every day. I just don't film it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more of it because they are absolutely adorable. It's been probably two months since I fed rodents to the big frog, so hey, I'm on a feeding bench here, right? So let's just go ahead and see if Snoop Frog wants a little tree, uh, as well as his cohort friends up here, Ice Croak and the Notorious. So what, this thing came out ridiculous. This is actually an Enchi Killer Blast Extreme Gene. Now, the Extreme Gene kind of reduces pattern, Enchi reduces pattern, and then it's a Killer Blast, which basically means it's a super pastel, it's a spider, and it's a pinstripe. All those genes together, it almost reduced all of the pattern and just made this kind of yellow snake with just kind of like tear dropping pattern. I love this snake. The cypress gene is a really cool gene. It's incomplete dominant gene that kind of causes striping. And an animal like this, which is a fire, a cinnamon, and a cypress, all incomplete dominant animals, you have just kind of this really interesting color play and the pattern, of course, with that striping. And this is a feisty little monkey. And I tell you what, you just add one more gene and it changes even more. And that extra gene is a yellow belly. Look at how different that snake looks just with yellow belly added. So again, this is a fire, it's a cinny, it's a cypress and it's a yellow belly and oh my gosh that is one absolutely ridiculously beautiful snake take a look at this one right here wow that thing is ridiculous of course this is what they call a killer pied which is just a super pastel pie ball python but with that super pastel and the kind of low white on this thing makes it look absolutely ridiculous doesn't it again lots of amazing ball pythons i tell you what i am so happy with the year that we had and it's exciting again that we're back in the breeding season again and next year hopefully it'll be even better. So here's the deal guys, uh, we are open thankfully amidst all the uh, closures here in Michigan. Our zoo is still able to be open each night and someone reached out to us and the last hour tonight they wanted to know if we could uh, let them do a proposal. That's right, a proposal here at the Reptarium. It's happened a couple times before but it's always exciting. This is a little bit different so what I told them is let's wait till everyone leaves that way they can take their masks off because let's face it no one wants to propose with a mask on right. So we're gonna go ahead wait it's almost closed when it's closed I'm gonna sneak over there just with my cell phone because to be honest with you I don't want to bring my camera I'm gonna ruin the surprise so on my cell phone I'll just film and uh, and see this proposal it should be pretty dope Amazing is that right here a proposal again I think that's our third proposal here at the Reptarium absolutely incredible love it I, I love just being a part of it and it was so cool to be able to experience it so I hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did enjoy this video do me a favor uh, go ahead and check this playlist out right here it'll kind of run you through a bunch of things I appreciate your support up here you can subscribe to my podcast we're doing three podcasts a week so definitely subscribe to that over on this side I hope that you're subscribed to this channel if you're not hit that subscription button turn all your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow